Here's Anthony and Mike with an AMI This Week shortcut. Mike, we both know working for AMI is fantastic, but I gotta say I'm a little jealous of your other job as the PA announcer for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Are you trying to kiss up to me now? No, 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 not at all. I am a huge fan and I love hockey. And I'm just messing with you. It's a dream come true and as good as you think it is. I mean, look at the team we've got right now. Austin Matthews is into his third season. Uh, Mitch Marner had a great training camp and number 91. John Tavares makes his debut this year. It must be so awesome, but I think my next story might even have you feeling a little green with envy. Really? What did you get up to this week? Well, Kelly McDonald, you know Kelly, right? Of course. He's one of the hosts of Kelly and Company, which airs weekdays at 2 p.m. on AMI-audio. Of course I know who Kelly is. I know, I know. He made me promise to plug his show a little bit, so I had to work it in somehow. Anyway, Kelly and I went down to Baltimore to take in a certain ball game. Hey, wait a minute. You didn't go to the National Federation for the Blind night at Oriole Park, did you? We just may have. Check this out. Baseball is a sport known for its devotion to tradition, but tonight the Baltimore Orioles are blazing a new path as they become the first team in American professional sports history to incorporate braille lettering on their game-worn jerseys. I'm Anthony McLaughlin here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards behind home plate for National Federation of the Blind Night. I'm also here with avid baseball fan Kelly McDonald. Kelly, before we get to the night's festivities, tell me, what does this event mean to you? Well, Anthony, you have a city and a team that are rich in baseball history. Standing shoulder sh to shoulder, celebrating with the National Federation of the Blind, a very tremendous milestone, so you can't miss. It's gonna be a great night. <laughs> with a couple of hours before first pitch between Toronto and Baltimore, Kelly and I made our way downstairs to track down one of the Orioles jerseys, which they would be wearing later tonight. So Kelly, we're now in a VIP lounge here at the stadium, and thanks to the Orioles organization, we've got some one-on-one -on -one time with these beautiful jerseys. Well, I know their colors for the Orioles, orange, uh, black, and white, right? What else about this? So this is their home whites, and the main big difference is where it would say Orioles across the chest. Now that's replaced with embroidered braille lettering. And it is, it's kind of indented, the dots somewhat, so you can really distinguish between them. O, R, this is just great, right across it. And again on the back, this is Mark Trumbo's number 45 home jersey, and his name bar, again, replaced with braille embroidery. There's your number, not in braille, but definitely Wow, this is a fully accessible jersey. This is a really wonderful uh, gesture that the Orioles have done here. Well, it's definitely gonna be a special night, but you know what, I'm curious how this all came to be, so I'm gonna catch up with the VP of Communications and Marketing, Greg Bader, and I'll check back with, me, with you a little later. Okay, I'll go save you a seat in the press box. <laughs> Sounds good. On the warning track behind home plate, I found Greg and asked him why the club wanted to celebrate the NFB. The National Federation of the Blind is an amazing uh, organization that is housed locally in Baltimore. This is where its headquarters is. They moved here 40 years ago. So we wanted to honor them for that anniversary. And we also wanted to continue the tradition of making Oriole Park um, known to be accessible and, and uh, available to everyone. Mark Riccobono, president of the NFB, explained how the night came about. We have developed a relationship with the Orioles. They've sponsored some of our events and they're interested in doing some more outreach to their fans with disabilities and they came up with the idea of putting Braille on the jerseys. Uh, of course, we didn't flinch and they made it happen. We've helped them out, but uh, they get 100% of the credit for the idea. One of the people responsible for furthering the relationship with the public is radio announcer Jim Hunter. Well, I think it's wonderful that the Orioles organization is doing this and calling attention to the fact that the National Federation of the Blind is a Baltimore institution. But we don't realize the impact we make with the blind baseball fans because they prefer to listen to the radio because we describe what's going on in the field. So when Adam Jones has a big game, we can describe that for the blind fans and they can enjoy our descriptions. One of the people Jim is responsible for captivating with his broadcast is Bill Cianella, a member of the blind and partially sighted community 
he shared what he hopes sighted fans will get out of the evening. Blind people love baseball. And just because I can't see everything that's going on in the field, it's not going to keep me away from here. I've been a season ticket holder for eight years, and I'm as rabid a fan as, as anybody else. And what I hope they get out of that and by the Braille is that, um, that blind and low vision people can be great fans, and, and they love coming to the game, and they, and they love supporting their sports team. After catching up with a few fans, it was time for Mark to throw at the first pitch. And he delivered, placing the ball just outside of the strike zone. On deck, accomplished pianist, singer, and white cane user, Carlos Ebay, to sing the national anthems. For the rest of the evening, Kelly and I kicked back and enjoyed the game. Ground ball up the middle, that's gonna score one. Here comes the second run, and the Blue Jays have taken the lead. The Blue Jays would go on to top the Orioles 6-4, but the night's event was a win in and of itself. Kelly and I are now standing on Utah Street behind the outfield grandstands. And Kelly, what a fantastic evening to honor the NFB and the blind and partially sighted community. You know, the Orioles, the city, and NFB just did everything right. It was spectacular. They absolutely did. I got one last question for you, Kelly. Do you think we can sneak in one more hot dog before we are kicked down out of here? Ooh, Anthony, there's always extra innings. Yes. <laughs> All right. You were right. I am very envious. I mean, that looked like an amazing experience. It was incredible. And being able to share the night with a baseball fan like Kelly made me appreciate it even more. Now, we heard Kelly's final thoughts on the, the whole evening in the story. But what about from your perspective? What was highlight of the night? You know what? Overall, the Orioles did a great job with the event. But if I had to pick just one moment, seeing all the players running out onto the field with their Braille jerseys on, that is something I will remember for a long time.